Evening and all. We're going to discuss what usually fails in these switch mode power supply circuits. Uh, this is the UC3844, this little block diagram right here inside this dash box. Before we get started, let's talk about safety. Here we have on this schematic diagram, we have 115 volts AC into this bridge rectifier right here that converts that 150 volts AC to 170 volts DC. So you can have a large uh, DC charge across this bus capacitor right here. And on the primary winding, on this side of the primary winding, you're going to have that 170 volts DC. Uh, so be very careful here. Let's talk about the secondaries and what I usually see bad out here. I have very rarely ever seen shorted diodes that convert that secondary switching uh, alternating waveform right there to DC. But what I have seen is shorted and leaky filtering capacitors out here on the secondary side. And you can tell when they're leaky. They'll, they'll leak onto the board. You'll see it. Uh, and then when you go to unsolder them, you'll smell it. It has a strange uh, smell when you go to unsolder that bad leaky or shorted capacitor out here. Y you can smell it. Uh, something to do with the heat of the soldering iron and the material uh, uh, that makes up that capacitor. It creates that strange smell. So take a look out here at these capacitors. Now you will have you will find shorts out here. Uh, the load will be shorted. Uh, so throw your meter from ground to five volts and see if you have a short circuit right there. Do the same for the plus and minus voltages down here. The next thing that <laughs> most common uh, failures in the switch mode power supply circuits is this power MOSFET. It will fail. It will short. That power of MOSFET right there, or it can be a power transistor, it works hard. And it works hard 24 hours a day. <laughs> week upon week, month upon month, year after year, decade after decade, and then eventually it says, oh, I don't want to do this no more. I'm going to short so they can put me in the ground. <laughs> and it will fail. It will short. So throw your meter across the gate drain and source of that power MOSFET and see if it's shorted. And if it is, you want to check this current feedback resistor right here and make sure that it's not opened up because you have large amounts of, it, of current flowing through this shorted device right here through that 0.5 ohm resistor and that will open up. Another thing to check and, and uh, uh, when this power MOSFET or transistor shorts out is check the primary winding because it's usually very low ohm being switched on and off at a high frequency. It doesn't have to be uh, very high uh, uh, resistance there So in the coil winding. So it will open up if this guy right here shorts out. And if you're lucky, and it doesn't open up all the time, I've uh, worked on two or three where the primary winding did open up and I couldn't do anything about it because I couldn't get that transformer. We had to order the new board to replace this uh, opened up transformer. But check that and make sure it hasn't opened up when this transistor right here shorts. Now, notice that the gate feeds directly into the output of that UC3844 through this 22 ohm resistor. If it's shorted through and through, and they usually are, the drain will be 
shorted to the gate, the gate will be shorted to the source, the drain and source will be shorted. Replace this IC. It will shoot back up in here and damage the driver stages of this IC. So if this is bad, go ahead and replace that. Next, this feed forward resistor. In order for this IC to start switching, it has to have a voltage uh, to power up that IC. And we have a 56K feed forward resistor right here on this schematic. It's different for every circuit that you'll see. I have seen this uh, uh, resistor right here open up, and so that when the uh, 115 volts AC was applied to the bridge rectifier and we had a bus voltage and we had uh, a voltage up here on the primary winding we didn't have a voltage down here to power up the IC so it couldn't start switching so check that resistor right there on pin 7 of the UC3844 going back to the power supply input I've seen the bridge rectifiers blown open, shorted, and destroyed. <laughs> and I've seen the bus capacitors short and blow open. And that will be another cause of this circuit not powering up. So don't forget to check that right there. Be all right. There's a parameter of the UC3844 called the under voltage lockout. We have to have a certain voltage here before this IC will start up. And in the UC3844 it's 16 volts uh, DC right here at this point right here for that IC to start up. They want the, the voltage to be high enough so that the circuitry the the VCC is stable you don't want to be running this thing if your VCC is all over the place uh, a couple of no, uh, things related to safety when you're probing around on on this uh, IC right here be very careful especially when you're looking out here look at this here's pin 5 is ground pin 6 is the switching output if you're probing on uh, pin 6 with your oscilloscope probe, don't short pin 6 to pin 5 <laughs> because that will cause uh, the output not to switch anymore. It may damage this. Now look at this. Here's VCC right here. Uh, don't short pin 6 to pin 7 because that will turn that power MOSFET on all the time and it will not withstand the currents through it and destroy that power MOSFET right there. So be careful when you're probing around on this IC. I think the last thing is this secondary right here. We have the feed forward resistor to start the IC up to provide the the voltage for this IC to start start switching. Then we start switching on the output right here. And that creates the secondary voltages over here. And it also creates a secondary voltage that's fed back into pin 7. So we start up with this feed forward voltage right here. And then we run with this feedback uh, this uh, secondary right here that's rectified to DC. I've seen the secondary uh, capacitors fail. That feeds back, that creates the DC fed back into pin 7. I've seen those fail. And usually when I have a capacitor bad in the power supply circuit, I'll go ahead and install all new capacitors right there. That's everything that I have seen go bad in a switch mode power supply circuit.
Okay, folks, thank you very much for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed that video. We'll see you next time.